Now, uh, Robbie Steinhardt is walking into the studio right now. He's right here with us. He's sitting down. He's putting his headphones on. Please welcome to the Late Afternoon Show. <laughs> Robbie Steinhardt from the group Frank Zappa. Hi, how you doing? Um, Hi, I'm Robbie. doing fine. Great. Hi. How are you? I'm great. I think. You look I, great. They asked me earlier how I was doing, and I said, uh, I think I'm okay. I haven't checked today, but we've been doing an awful lot of driving the last few weeks. So I heard. I like, heard you were down in Richmond last night, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Where else were you? Were you on the Midwest? Actually, um, we did. Uh, we've been like flying and driving, and it's like, uh, like the the name of the band, the band in Atlanta called Driving and Crying. It's like uh, we've been doing an awful lot of that. We played. I was telling him we went to Atlanta, um, from Atlanta where everybody lives except for myself. Um, then we drove to Myrtle Beach, which is six hours. Then yeah. you play, and then you drive six hours back, and you know. Um, but we were in El Paso, we were in Des Moines, we were all over the place. We we went and did our show in Cleveland one time, and we know how tedious that drive is sometimes. Yeah, and you guys do it every day. Well, almost every day, yeah. Do you have a big bus? Um, they used to before I came back. See, I've been gone for fifteen years, and I've just been back like five months. Welcome back. Thank you very much. It's good to be here. First, <laughs> first of all, Robbie, I want to show that you're not dealing with just any ordinary chimps. We're on the cover of this magazine right here. Okay. Harrisburg. <laughs> Harrisburg Magazine. Wait, now you guys had that done at SeaWorld, right? Did that cover? Yes, exactly. No doubt at Hershey Park. Yeah, yeah, at Hershey Park you can get your... Oh, stop. That's what it looks like. You could actually it do that. Does. You could actually lie about that. Yeah. So, so just you're not doing... Congratulations. Yeah, okay, great. You're just not dealing with any kind of chimps here. <laughs> and you didn't even know Harrisburg had a magazine, did you? No, I didn't. Uh-huh. Hey, so uh, so now you're you're back and doing some shows again with with the group, and is that a good thing? Yeah, it, uh, so far it's been really great, and then we're it's just the tip of the iceberg because we got so much, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, so much ahead of us. Um, we played like about 15 dates since I've joined the band, and and we have 15 this month, 21 dates next month in July, about 15 or so in in August. Then um, a couple at the very beginning of September, we're going to be in a little town in Kansas rehearsing with an orchestra. And then we go to Abbey Road Studios, uh, I think the 7th of, some, somewhere between the 10th and the 7th of September. Well, that's Ooh. exciting. In London to do uh, the record with the London Symphony Orchestra. Wow. And then after that, um, once Phil has his baby, then we go on, on the road for like eight months and we're going to be playing, every town we play in, we'll be playing with a different orchestra. Speaking so, of orchestra, I understand that you play the violin. I do indeed. That's part of the bring part your, of the tie in there. You didn't bring your violin. Yeah, Scott asked me if I would, and I said, "Why? Did they want to look at it?" Well, no, um, no, no, and no. I said, "He said no. They wanted you to." And I went, "I don't do that sort of thing." We, so we, we're fans of the violin. We uh, one of our one of our close friends comes yeah. in here occasionally and plays the violin. And he, in fact, he has this million dollar violin. He does. Yeah. His, his violin. He has a Stradivarius. Actually, yes. Yes. He does. It's actually, a million dollars. Yeah. It's like a three point two million dollar violin. Are you serious? Yeah. 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 You have friends like this? Yeah. yeah. I'd like to hey, get to know him. You know, we're, we're on the cover of the magazine. Yeah. We are not just ordinary <laughs> chips right here, my friend. I, I, I see that now. Maybe I can take you seriously. Yeah, we are talking to Robbie Steinhardt from uh, the group Kansas uh, at Wanda's tonight. Now you don't do many of these club dates. No. What's up um, with that? Is that like well, a little? I mean, what's up with that is because maybe places like Wanda's have like there seems to be like a seven foot ceiling in there. Yes, yeah, um, <laughs> I've, I've heard some strange things from people who are on the internet and stuff. But of course, I'm not on it myself because I figure I, I'll get too wrapped up on, in it. But um, it's kind of a, it looks like kind of a strange gig. There. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go no, ahead. Go ahead. Oh, well, that's, there are posts right. all over the place. It's not really designed for this type of a thing, it doesn't seem like. Mm-hmm. Plus, it's a, a, a dinner a theater as well. I mean, they serve dinner while the band... I don't <laughs> oh, know, I don't understand. Don't you'll, have, listen. you'll have so much no, no, fun, I'm not Robbie. saying I'm not going to enjoy it because it's going to be neat, but it's just an odd setup is all, and then it's part of a Holiday Inn, which is also an odd setup. <laughs> so, you I mean, because I look at it and I think, well, maybe we should be playing Proud Mary and songs like that. <laughs> well, you had just mentioned the internet, and I understand now... You know, 1997, here you are back with Kansas, and it's a whole different thing going on. I understand that on the Internet, there is a group called Children of South Wind that do chat rooms strictly about you and your band. You know, well, that, that you just gave away yourself. You don't know anything. She doesn't know Kansas too well, I guess. The, it's People of the South Wind, okay, which is the name of the Kansas song, which is why they're called. Did somebody tell you oh, Children of the children of Whoever the that is, Wind. you need to slap them. Scott? Oh, Scott. <laughs> yeah, it was your friend Scott, the, Scott, Scott Shaw, Shaw, the hitman. Right? Even I know that. It's, yeah, P-O-S-W, people but of you, the South. Would you say oh. you don't have a computer P-O-T-S-W. and you're not on Absolutely. the Internet, but you read a lot of these things? Um, I do get, uh, yeah, my manager faxes them to me as, as he gets them off the Internet sometimes when he thinks they're worth reading. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting background music you, ever, you got going here. You ever got to get in those chat rooms, you know? And just I, I've only, no, I've never done that myself, but I... I it was really interesting. Last year, when, when I had some, something going, you can do I, this is a, a little inside humor here. Um, uh, 
But uh, last year, I, I tried to get on uh, America Online, and because I was going to my friend's house, my manager's house, Nick Fakuri, and I said that I was going to be, he said, announced that I was going to have some sort of a chat with people online mm-hmm. at a certain time, a certain night. So we got on, and the whole system shut down. So I thought, hey, I'm really popular. How, this is great. <laughs> you know? I blew the system out. The fuse just went. So oh. um, You seem a little uh, high strung today. Is yeah, it, what are you, are you, high strung? Yeah, as if uh, doing some caffeine. Are you just excited wow. about the show? Are you, you think getting, so? Getting like into well, it? Tonight? I had one of these. Well, um, well I love what radio. Is what is it's that? caffeine free. I love doing radio. You do love doing radio. I love doing radio. Okay. Yeah. Well, we don't like to. So do I'm not. I'm no. I'm not high strung normally. Um, as a matter of fact, I mean, I usually have energy, but um, I told him. I, see, when I was with the band, well, I know. I, I happen to know because I've done so much radio in the past. I mean, I was with the band for ten years. Yeah. And I did radio a lot, and about you know forty to fifty percent of the time when I'd go on a show after I'd come off the show, the uh, general manager would say, "Would you like a job here?" You know. So. <laughs> I'm very, I'm very, very comfortable on radio, and I was looking forward to doing this. So that's why, and I know that the worst thing about radio is dead air. So not if, on our if show. If you want me to shut up, I will. No, 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 no. no. I just, uh, you just seem very energetic, and I, and I appreciate that because I uh, am. I, I'm I a am. very, you know, I like the energy. Okay. Enjoy the energy. Okay. Love and see, sometimes um, I drink too much coffee, mm. and, and I get it going too. You know, much. I don't, dr- I don't drink it that often. Mm. What do you drink? What's your I favorite just, beverage? <laughs> he told me this was one of those kind of shows. Yeah, it is. Um, you know, I don't well, that, that. this is perfect for me though because I've never been on a show that was like this. I mean, oh. this, first of all, there weren't really shows like this back when I was still in the band. Um, uh, radio was a lot more um, prim and proper at that time. Prim okay? and proper. Yes. What year was that? Um, the prim and proper year was 1977 <laughs> and a half, I think. That's and that's but, when uh, I was. That's when I started in radio. Twenty years ago, it'll be twenty years next Friday that I've been in radio. Really? And I just related a story that uh, you guys were at the Allentown Fair, and uh, my my two best friends from high school met uh, at this radio station, and because they were at the station, they fired me because they were waiting to go to the Allentown Fair to, to see you guys. And I'm sure you remember the Allentown Fair. You probably were there a couple times. They fired you. They, yeah. they oh, fired I... me because my friends were waiting for me in the lobby. To see Kansas. Well, that doesn't make any sense, but but what does? I mean, well. Well, um, he, was well doing, you... he was doing a country station. Yeah, it was country. So. Um, by the way, congratulations on your award. The Marconi Award. Yes, indeed. Yeah, well, thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> And you also surround yourself with good people. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> hey, you know, I was Do you, looking. Oh. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, I just I wanted to know something because um, I know it's like different market and everything. But I wondered, did you ever get a chance to hear any New York radio at all? Because I have a very good friend who's doing very well in New York right, all right now. Janice, go ahead. You take that question. Bruce's second home is New York. It is. Okay. He doesn't do anything here. Yeah, we're three hours away. Yeah. I, I just happen to live here during the week on weekends. Right. So when you're there and if you ever run into my friend Lionel, would you tell him I said hello? What station does he work? I don't know, but it's one of the biggest shows in the in the world in the, in in the, the world. world right now. Elvis Duran. He's from Tampa originally. He's a friend of mine. Um, El- Elvis Duran is the morning guy on uh, Z100. Well, Lionel's there. a talk show guy. But um, so I mean I don't know. Is he drive time or is he? In the I don't. Morning? I think he's drive now. But I, 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 no, I can't tell you. I and, wish I knew. I'm sorry, I don't have the answer. And RuPaul. But he is he's really the, good. He's the morning morning guy at uh, KTU. I wow. just got to I got to warn you about Lionel because he might he might take that award from you next year. So be careful. Go wow. for it, man. I'm looking for all the competition I can okay. get. You said RuPaul was the morning guy. He would be the morning <laughs> girl, honey. Okay. <laughs> whatever. Whatever. You know, I was looking over the uh, the album that I have here of Kansas, and Don Kirshner's name is all over. What was your affiliation with Don Kirshner? Did he well, he owned the record? Label yeah, that was his started? label, and then uh, we were signed with him, and he was signed with CBS, Epic, whatever particular branch of, of that company that uh, he was involved with at the, t- at the time. But uh, and in the beginning of Saturday Night Live, like mid seventies, uh, Paul Schaefer, who's now with Letterman used to come on and make fun of Don Kirshner. Yes, he did. And was that a pretty good imitation of just um, this, this guy, Don Kirshner? Who well, the, the words were right. Yeah, it's like, I think it's, I think I don't think anybody can imitate Don because he, he had a, he's had his own way. I mean, just if you watch his own, his tapes of the show that he did, um, um, it, like, yeah, a good imitation, but there's, there's nobody like him um, and definitely an individual. Mm-hmm. I mean, the man, I haven't seen him for years and years and years. I yeah, mean, I he helped us an awful lot, but it was always amazing. I've never seen any man in my life. Of course, I don't hang around millionaires and billionaires, but um, perfectly manicured nails all at all times, you know, two, $3,000 suits all the time. I mean, the guy was just an immaculate person, but he had a few problems with going, you know, trying to introduce a band like Kansas. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> Talking to Robbie Steinhardt from uh, the band Kansas. Do you ever play Kansas, like the, the state of Kansas? Uh, yes, Kansas? as a matter of fact, uh, I was saying we're going to be doing a small town um, in Kansas called Winfield. Um, right before we go to London, we're going to be rehearsing there with an orchestra. That must be uh, crazy. To try to get it down. Crazy. Kansas and Kansas. Yeah. yeah. Um, and back, back when we were just starting to take off and we had a few songs on the radio and stuff, uh, they even banned one of our songs in Kansas because they said it was not supposed to be on the air. Which so. one was that? It was called Bringing It Back. It was on the very first record we ever did. Oh. So, um, well, you know, the, the funny thing is, it's just how they say about certain things you can't get arrested in your hometown. That's the way it was for us. When we're popular, I mean, for instance... One of the reasons I wanted to do this show was because we're more popular in the state of Pennsylvania than anywhere in the world. Okay? Are and you serious? Yeah, this is our big stronghold, the state of Pennsylvania. We've been back and forth across this state a million times. And I understand wow. that there's all kinds of people coming to this well, area I, on this um, it's all internet those, group. It's all those internet people. From all, over the, from all over the country and Canada, literally, to come to central Pennsylvania to see you. Well, that's what I heard, yeah. Isn't that that's wild? What's on, yes, it's wild. And they're going like, to be able to hopefully see you around the beams and the low ceilings. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, you, you guys should check this place out. Cool. It's really yeah. wild. I hope the dinner theater production of uh, A Death of a Salesman doesn't interfere with them watching your <laughs> Show. <laughs> who, the, who the hell is that? That's the man in the wall. Oh. That's John Paul Shaver. He's over in the Pay no room. attention to the man behind the curtain? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, if you want to like come around, he's right over here. Maybe you can see him right there. Hi, John. There How you, you doing? Right wow. Around. Well, yeah. we figured since you were Kansas and, and, and the guy on The Wizard of Oz was behind the curtain that we'd have one of them here. Get it, Kansas? It's, perf- Get it? it's well, absolutely that perfect. That's kind of a strange segment. I'm glad you picked up on that. So what have you been doing the last 15 years? Your own Uh-oh. sort of music, or shouldn't I ask that question? No, no, it's a good question. Um... Uh, well, let's see. After I got out of the band, I started um, to raise my daughter till uh, she was about five or so, and then um, we I split up from her mom. And but I see them because they, they only live a few miles away from me, so we see each other all the time. My daughter's like almost fourteen now. Her name is Becky, Aww. and um, so I spent those those first five years doing that, which are important. They tell me the most important years in a child's life yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. to develop a bond with your kid. So, yeah. and most dads are at the, the, during those periods of uh, of growing up are usually gone at the office all day long, stuff like that. I was home constantly. <laughs> Um, and then after that, I, um, I started a band called Steinhardt Moon, which is my last name and my partner Rick Moon's last name, oh, cool. down in Tampa St. Petersburg, Clearwater. And we played together for the last six years. Let's see, went through three different bands. I fired three different bands, which was weird because I'd never fired anyone before. And then um, as I'm playing with them, all of a sudden I get a call from Phil. It's like, you want to do this again? I went, excuse me? So um, you got to understand how great this is for me. I mean, I, I was famous, and then... I wasn't, even though I get recognized all the time on the street. I'm almost every day in my life because of the way I look. Yeah. I mean, I never ever thought I'd have. Nobody ever gets a second chance to do something like this, to see the world again and to play again. And so, d- while you you had your own little band thing, did you ever think of getting back together with Kansas? Sure, sure, I did, yeah. but I didn't think it would happen because, if see, they had two guys that quit almost well almost at the same time within two or three months of each other or whatever. And if those guys hadn't quit, then I probably wouldn't be sitting here right now. Yeah, but 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 you have to at least think that that happens all the time in life. I mean, look at the Eagles. No one ever thought the Eagles would get back well, together. Well, I mean, it was an eternity. Yeah, it took a while. And there's such a resurgence right now with everything. Everything's retro and everything's coming back. And uh, now you guys are doing this. Are you doing a lot of this old music, or are you kind of oh, you bringing in to. new music as well? The live or show? Like, what are they looking for? Yeah. We're doing all old music. Especially, but that's great. Ooh. Especially in the uh, in Pennsylvania, you got to do those old Yeah, I, well, I think so, or else they wouldn't let us in. And Carry I, on my wayward son. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. It's okay. It's all right. <laughs> sorry, you want to sing with us? You can. <laughs> but, Carry you have, <laughs> but you have to admit, and that, that, I mean, that's like a high school song of mine, and that's just a classic song. Absolutely. Well, um, I happen to like it, too. I wish I had written the song. I mean, I love I love the, the way that Steve and Carrie used to write together, and... and um, that's why it's great to be back here playing. See, I've been playing this music ever since I left them. It's, I mean, almost, because with Steinhardt Moon, we did almost all Kansas. Mm-hmm. Oh. So, oh, I see. And we were, well, probably, I guess because I was in it, it helped a lot, you know. So sure. we, had, we had the best Kansas copy band that's ever been. Yeah, do you, so. do you ever do any Leonard Skinner? Um, actually, no. <laughs> <Just> kidding. <laughs> and, and do you find in your audience that uh, there's a lot of young kids now that, that met, you know, this is all new Kansas? Well, apparently, I mean, uh, 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 hello. Thank you. Apparently, there were a, <laughs> wow. That's a picture for the magazine. <laughs> should have, you guys should have seen what I was doing when he took that photograph. <laughs> well, get your finger out of your nose. <laughs> it was much worse than that. Oh, boy. I forgot what the, yeah. what question, was the question was. Again? I'm sorry. 
I have about no the idea. audience. Oh, the audience. So you, the age of the audience. Yeah. That crazy the, last audience. Last night at the show that we did, there were it was outdoors. There were um, there was a like a seven year old in the front. There were there was a ten year old. You know, there was like a, it was really interesting because uh, I was just telling someone out here one of the one of your ladies, very pretty, whose name I have forgotten. Uh, told me that, hey, I saw you, I saw my first concert, which was Kansas when I was 14. I said, on the drive up here today, I had just told one of the guys in the band, I said, because of, because of all the little kids in the audience last night, I said, you know what's going to start happening? I said, you know how people normally come up and say, hey, I was 13, 14, I, I saw you, that's the first show I ever saw. And then she came in and said that to me today. I said, yeah. He said, yeah. I said, well, after looking at the little kids in the audience today, I was thinking, you know, in, in several years from now, we're going to get people come up going, you know, you're the first band I ever saw, and I was six years old, you know. So the times have really changed with music. And parents are turning their kids on a lot younger. Yeah, or they're going to say something like, yeah, my parents were listening to Kansas when I was conceived. Yes, yes. <laughs> but that's okay. It's a good thing. You hear those things, well, definitely. you know what? You just got to, I mean, look at the Rolling Stones. God, I mean, how old are they? I mean, that's just, that's, it's a good thing. It just, uh, you know, t- time goes on. Yeah. We all get older. Oh, it's great. And so what? Get over it. It's great. I'm just, oh, I was saying that it seems like younger kids are coming to the shows, which is fine as long as they come to ours. Right. Now, this is this is the song that you wrote right here, this song. Hi. Right there, me? Oh, just a little tiny piece of it. No, that's Steve's song. Oh, because Steve your, Walsh wrote your that na- song. Your name's on this song. Yeah, right? I got lucky. He was nice. And this was a big uh, hit song. I said, Steve, change that one note right there, will you? Yeah, and was, <laughs> was this song, like this Dust in the Wind thing, was this like the uh, biggest song? Because this kind of This got, is like, the big one. This got so yeah. sappy when it was out, because uh, radio yeah. played the hell out of it. Well, uh, but see, if, if it's yours, then you want them to play the hell out of it. But if it's you listening to someone else's music, you go, why did they keep playing the hell right. out of this? Song. Is that totally true? I mean, do, don't you know as a, as a member of the band that if they keep playing it, it, it you, you, you know, you... It, cha-ching. It, yes. Oh, okay. Yes, of course. Cha-ching. Uh-huh. He said cha-ching, John. Who doesn't like that sound? Cha-ching. Right, it's cha-ching. <laughs> well, besides, uh, I wish I'd have written this tune. I mean, Carrie wrote it. It's a beautiful song. Um, never, Carrie never dreamed that it would be a hit. Steve, I think Steve was the one that knew that Dust was going to be a hit. But uh, I don't know how the other guys felt because I don't remember talking to him. Remember, remember Steve saying, this is a hit. But Carrie thinking, God, this is not going to be a hit. This is the most depressing song I have ever written. Oh, well, people like that. But they, yes, that's right. No. People like that depressing song. See, John knows all about those depressing things. The butterfly kisses. Yeah. It's happening yeah. again today. Yeah, yeah, could, look could, that could, no, wait, now, butter, see, did I you keep butterfly reading butterfly kisses for tonight? I keep reading about this, but <laughs> I, I don't know anything about the song. Well, Never keep it that way. It's this religion, Am I lucky? It's a, it's, a, it's a contemporary Christian artist Bob named Carlisle. Bob Carlyle who talks about how his daughter grows up and then it's real emotional. He gets to the wedding, and he sees his daughter mm-hmm, like yeah, leaving, yada, yada, and yada. and instead of a, a regular so, kind of kiss, he, she just goes over and gives that butterfly, that butterfly kiss, thing. which is just the eyelash. So it's hidden. right up there with uh, like you light up my life and songs like oh, that. Yes, um, and well, I have to tell you, I get a tear oh, every time I hear it. I was it. just reading a, in, in one of the magazines about a, a guy who's just released a book about um, like the worst songs of all time or whatever. Yeah, I, oh, who I just that was. read that um, too. Oh, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, D- Dave Barry, the guy from the uh, the Miami Herald. Uh, some of the stuff I read was really funny. Well, number number four is love. To Love You Baby by Donna Summer. There you go. Ooh. Number three is Having My Baby, which, by the way, was the song that that girl requested after she had the baby in the uh, the bathroom oh, last, last week. Yeah. And then number three was uh, <laughs> Yummy. All oh, right. Yummy, yummy, yummy. yummy, 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 yummy I got love in my tummy. tummy. I have that in my tabloid update somewhere. And the, and the top song was MacArthur Park by Richard Harris. I thought that was the 1910 Fruit Gum Company, but it wasn't, was it? it no, was that a, was it. it, was a, it was, is that who did that 1910 song? 1910 Fruit, okay. Fruit Gum Company. Yeah. Remember that section at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame that all those one-hit w- wonders? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. I'm sorry. that I'm, I'm usually more articulate than that. The, the gum did not come out, so it's you okay. had to repeat that for me. Oh, because, that's okay. Because we know people that, you know, I, like I said, I knew people in radio who said, you have to learn how to say, this is station WWWW. <laughs> um, and I go, man, I don't know if I want I want to get into radio. You know, I like this song too. This was just like an album rock type of thing too. This this uh, song for America, but this is such a great song. Um, and that song, I, I told the audience last night, got airplay in, in places like LA and stuff, and it was ten minutes long. I was amazed that it got played on the radio. Well, Not even DJs have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Nine minutes and eight seconds. Well, it's right. well, it's one of those. Uh, um, yeah, it's one of those songs, John. Like. Uh, if you wanted to do more than go to the bathroom uh-huh. back in back in the good old days, it was, uh, it was that Stay Where to Heaven or you know, Gata De Vida. Or, um, well, there was another 18-minute tune that, um, that, I, that escapes me right now. Where are we at the moment? Uh, no, wait. Um, well, um, um, uh, American Pie was a long one. Remember that one? Yeah, that was long. Not, um, and, of course, when I was a kid, the longest song on the radio was House of the Rising Sun, um, along with uh, the maybe one other one. Yeah. Um, where are we right now? Well, we have to go up and get a traffic check oh. from uh, from Marv. Marv? Yeah. 
you're, 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 welcome, you're welcome to stay around, though, and oh, hang I'll be out glad to stick around if you, this, if you will let me. Isn't this fun radio? Oh, it's here, great, fun. Yeah, great fun. We really don't really give a crap about it. Anymore, so. Yeah. Marv has uh, traffic, and we're behind, so... I mean... Marv, Mar- Mar- while, you're, while you're doing the traffic here, I just want to take more pictures of Robbie here. We'll go right ahead. All right, great. <laughs> Wink Eye in the Sky update and heading north on the river routes this afternoon, 22 3 22, just back to Fishing Creek. Minor delays 11 to 15 in the Marysville. Just got done checking out the Miracle Mile and that's looking fine. Appears that uh, possibly the baseball game on City Island is over or close to being over. We're seeing traffic outbound on the Market Street Bridge. It is over, Marv. It is over. Central What's Dolphin for? is the AAA state baseball champions. They defeated State College 15 to 4. <laughs> Yes, yes, well done, Rams, well done. Well, those folks who are celebrating State College folks must be the ones that uh, are on the bridge right now because they are trying to depart on both ends of the Market Street Bridge, and you will find that heavily congested. John Wills popping in the sky. Okay, bend over. John. Paul Schaefer, John 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 Paul Schaefer. Yeah. All right, now what we do is we go over to the to the newsroom and we find out from our news guy, John Paul Schaefer, what uh, are some of the topics that he'll be uh, doing in the news uh, coming up next. Well, everyone, we're going to talk about charter schools. We'll also talk about a big water main break in Hummelstown this morning. York City School District working on a policy of non-harassment. Talk about Dr. Jack Kevorkian's trial, and uh, Governor Ridge now has to make good on his bet that he made with the governor of Michigan after that horrible, horrible yeah. Stanley Cup. And I know what happened. He has to ride a Zamboni machine, mm-hmm. doesn't he? From here to there. <laughs> <laughs> where does he have to ride that Zamboni machine? He will say where he's going to ride it. There are rumors he may practice at Hershey and then ride it in Philadelphia at the Core State right. Center. And is that it, John? Is that, is that all you have? I think we'll have traffic again, more weather. I'll give you the score of the baseball game one more time. And by the way, it was three years ago today, the murders of Nicole Brown and Ron Goldman. It was a Sunday night, but this was the big day that O.J. went went on a rampage and yeah, just, like, yeah. you know, cut these people's throats from ear to ear. That savage beast. And then left all those, all those clues everywhere. That idiot. <laughs> God. It was harder to get Professor Plum in the library with a lead pipe. He <laughs> left fewer clues than OJ. All right, the 4.30 news is next. And, Robbie, you're welcome to hang around and uh, stay as long as Thanks, you like. Thanks. Uh, I bet John's been waiting for that line for a long time. <laughs> yeah, we'll be right back. More of the Late Afternoon Show with Bruce Bond. Right after this. Let's go, Bears. Meat dog meat out of Hamilton. To Fishing Creek, minor delays 11 and 15 into Marysville. And you're, let's see, we're discussing some uh, slowing 83 northbound. Heading into the 19th Street bottleneck, that is now back to 2nd Street. So uh, some slowing there as well as 83 southbound approaching the South Bridge. John Wills, Bach, Wink, High in the Sky. Tee off is Sunset Golf Clubs. Play and ride specials Monday through Friday. Get greens fee and cart for $21 per person, $19 for seniors, and $26 weekends after 2 p.m. Call Sunset Golf Club Middletown at 944-5415 for tee times. Hi, this is Marv Albert. I'd like to wish a happy 30th birthday to my very close friend, John Wilsbach, winner of the Greater Harrisburg Albert Soundalike Contest. And please stop calling me. You are not my long-lost son. Rob Carolyn's weather tonight, mostly cloudy, a 70% chance of showers and thunderstorms, a low of 65. Friday, mostly cloudy with a chance of showers and thunderstorms and a high of 83. Then Saturday, mostly sunny, a high of 83. It's 79 degrees. I'm John Paul Schaefer. Wink Watch News time is 443. Do I make you horny? Not in the least. <laughs> in the studio with us is uh, Robbie Steinhardt from Kansas. Uh, we'll talk to him in just a little bit. Uh, Puck is online. We've uh, sent Puck out for an experiment, a late afternoon experiment today. Can a late afternoon intern, Puck, get five different food items from five different restaurants off of five different customers' plates? And he's not, he's got to show some uh, some proof about all this, too. Puck, where are you? What are you doing? Well, I just left Applebee's on Route 22, uh, 
Before that, I was kicked out of Red Lobster. <laughs> all right. Uh, but, I, but I got the food. <laughs> I got the food. You have all five items? Uh, no, I have four. I'm going for my fifth right now. Wh where are you? At the Applebee's? Well, uh, I'm just leaving Applebee's now. I'm going uh, down 22. Why don't you go to Dairy Queen and just, like, lick off of somebody's cone? I, I don't think that would work. <laughs> Unless right. I came back and spit it out. Well, well, Puck, great. I can't wait to hear more stories when you get back. Okay. All right, goodbye. Goodbye. Yeah, hey, be careful. Goodbye. That's just the kind of the things we do. Well, I know it's uh, it's called simple things to amuse simple minds. Exactly. Thank you, Robbie. You've said that beautifully. You've uh, crystallized my thoughts. You've said that so eloquently. <laughs> and as long as we're amused, we don't care about the other simple minds. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> and by the way, in the 6 o'clock hour tonight, if you have a dog, we're, we're going to need your dog. And we'll give you a prize for bringing your dog to a certain location. That's all I'll say at this point. What are we going to make the dog do? Well, the dog will be very happy. That's all I can mm -hmm. tell you. <laughs> All right. Robbie Steinhardt, uh, Kansas, and uh, playing tonight at the uh, Wanda's. Yeah, that's what they tell me. Yeah, Wanda's Beach Club, I think it's called, or something yeah. like that. I think so, yeah. I believe it's a TV. Famous. Club. World famous. I don't get it, but it's world famous. World famous. Very well known. No, I, actually, Scott told me that there's a, an outdoor deck there that when they have those kind of shows, there's like 1,800 or 2,000 people there, something like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So yeah, and you know, it's, uh, it's And then I'm going, why the heck are we indoors then? Well, you know what the problem is? Is what? because when you play outdoors. The it, neighbors. The neighbors. And it's ridiculous. I asked him about that. It's not uh, it, that place doesn't have neighbors. It's it's not a it's not a um, a residential area. Wait, wait. Stretch can help you out here. Stretch, give us the details on that. Yeah, I can. Unfortunately, there's a trailer park right across the highway <laughs> okay. from Wanda's. Uh, you know that. And, and I, I have the, the solution. I have a tornado in my pocket. <laughs> <Okay>. Good. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess the, the, there's this particular woman in the trailer park that constantly calls, calls the uh, Hampton Township Police Department, so that's the problem. Oh, and also Scott says you don't. there's something about the law that you don't have to give your name when you call up. Is, is that true? That you don't have to give your name when you call up to complain about noise? I guess. You just uh, have he, to, said, he said he heard something like that. As long as they get the complaint, they got to do something about it. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Hey, I wanted to just read this story real quick, and uh, Robbie, I think you'll enjoy this. A uh, 49-year-old man was ordered to undergo therapy and pay $300 in fines and restitution on Monday after pleading guilty to lewd conduct with horses. Oh, boy. That What's happened in this area here? Well, no, I believe uh, <laughs> in, uh, in California. Ah, uh, that's better. Paul Milhouse in Spring Valley, California, ordered to, uh, to stay at least 200 yards away from all livestock <laughs> and stay out of the town of Lakeside, California. Several ranchers in Lakeside testified that this guy had been sneaking into their corrals late at night for years now and, and bothering their animals. What are people thinking? One rancher observed this guy engaging in perverse behavior with one of their mares. Wow. Oh. Hmm. Uh, Millhouse, this guy, elderly, his, his elderly mother uh, testified that her son has never been cruel to livestock. Wow. Millhouse. <laughs> I always knew there was something weird about him. She said he, he loves animals. No. That <laughs> but just don't love the animals. <laughs> and uh, when, he, when that uh, remark was made, um, it drew snickers from members of the courthouse gallery. So I thought That's that the, Is that the character from The Simpsons? Is yeah, that Millhouse. Yeah. 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 Let's see. I believe we have Millhouse here somewhere. Hold on. Hold on. Hey, that's very good. good. That's Enjoy cool. that. Thank you. That's not one of my best, but <laughs> what other sound effects do you do? No, I mean I do that better. It's just that it, my cheek hurts today. It's hard to hit. You know. Yeah. Hold on. Here, here. Is this Millhouse? Let me see. Excellent. No, that's no. Not no. no, no. That'd be uh, Montgomery. <laughs> Burns. Thank you, Mr. Burns. <laughs> here, how's this one? Though? <laughs> there, no. Cool. Oh, okay. Well, that's, that's what's, what's his happened. name. Hmm. hmm. Okay. Well, he, he tried. So, uh, Robbie, what else, is, uh, what else is happening here? Um, I don't know. Um, I'm uh, I'm going to be on the road for the next century, so I'm you know come out and see me. Where's I mean, wherever. I mean, I'm, I was telling her that she has to bring her brother. Uh, she Taj has to bring Mahal. Frank to the Taj Mahal. So um, and that should that, be fun. And that's not Frank, our producer, who's uh, no. Janice's brother. No, um, my brother Frank Radoka. And this is just the beginning of the tour. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, there's a boy. It's going to go on forever. I mean, oh, well, once once we get into the uh, into the Abbey Road Studio thing, then we're going to be you know we're we'll be touring with orchestras until. Or did I even have I told you about no, this? No, yet? Yes, you did. And oh, you that's know what I thought. That has to be very exciting because I know you told me during the commercial break you're 47 years old. Yes, I am. And uh, I'm uh, 28. I'm 28. <laughs> Um, yeah. But uh, I know that I could relate with, like, the Abbey Road. That's like, one of my favorite Beatles uh, albums yeah, in that too. time period. Um, that must be very exciting well, to go to Le England and do it in that. Actually be in that studio, yeah. yeah. And then to be doing it with the London Symphony Orchestra, who has done lots of things like that before, like working with the Moody Blues and all kinds of. Uh, yeah. They're the, they're the symphony that's most 
um, acquainted with pop music or rock music, you know, and stuff from the past. And so uh, and it should be really something. And we're using the same um, gentleman who scored all the music for the Moody Blues when they went out on, on tour with, and, with an orchestra. And just to feel the presence of all of the people that have been through the studio. Yeah. yeah. I can't wait to go up on top and play Let It Be or something. Yeah, I mean, powerful that would be, that would be stuff, cool. man. Very powerful. Yeah, John Lennon might be right there with you. Matter of fact, I uh, I went and saw a friend of mine play the other day, Kip Winger, who used to have a band called Winger, and uh, he I, he found out we were going to be there. He said, "I want to go." I said, "Anywhere I am, you're you're welcome. You're a friend, you know." So, so everybody, come on over to London and let's have a big party. Okay. What, and when's that going to be? Actually, I think that's somewhere around the seventh of September. Oh, okay. Hmm. And so all the summer, you're you're doing various dates. Yeah, we're just um, somewhere else tomorrow, and and the day after that, and the day after that. Yeah. I, I mean, I can't relate to doing something like that, just being on tour and just going from one from the other. But, um, you know, I can see it being tedious, but on the other side, it's got to be kind of fun. Well, it's very rewarding, except the travel part is, and unless you're, I mean, multimillionaires and you can afford your own transportation, like a plane, something like that, mm -hmm. um, it gets to be very tedious being at the mercy of the airlines, you know, flying commercially, uh, driving rental cars, all that stuff. It's like a, we've always referred to it, and I still do, as hurry up and wait, because that's what we do so much of. Yeah. But the glamour part is actually being on stage, being able to do what you love doing, and then getting repercussions from the crowd, whether it be good or bad. Um, it's still rewarding in one way or another, and it's uh, and so far it's been extremely rewarding. Kansas would get uh, bad repercussions from the crowd? I would hope not. Oh, I wouldn't think so. We've had a couple. Oh. You never know. <laughs> you liar. <laughs> <laughs> you have beautiful hair. Thank you very much. Very nice. Very Where long. do we go from there? Well, no, uh, don't ha stare at me like has that. Your ha yeah, well, I was just saying. Hey, now. <laughs> has, has you, has you, have you always had that length of hair? Yes, yeah, so actually, I used to have what they call big hair, a lot bigger than this. So, um, um, big but, but I'm older big. now, see? So, um, all, all my fans used to always say, don't ever cut your hair, so I never did. I mean, I get it trimmed once every six months, about an inch, and that's it. You know, you're 47, and I know 20 years ago, definitely that's when Carry On Wayward Son was popular. So you yeah. had a, the group even had to be older than that, let's say 25 years ago, right, maybe? Yeah. So you started when you were like 22 or something. Yes, exactly. That's exactly right. Yeah. Have you always played music? Have you always wanted to be a musician? Yeah, well, my father was the chairman of the Music History and Literature Department at Kansas University. Okay. And so that's where, and I lived two blocks off campus, and I was raised in Lawrence, Kansas, um, where KU is, where the Jayhawks are from, from... Uh, the age of one and a half to like 25, so um, a great town to, to be to be raised up in. But the thing is, you never you don't really realize it till you go back after you've gone away. You know, like the grass is always greener, that sort of thing. And where do you call your home now? So now I'm in Tampa, Florida. Oh. I've been there since 1975, and the rest of the band lives in Atlanta. Hmm. Are you a Buccaneers fan? I'm not. I stopped being a Buccaneers fan a lot of years ago. Um, y you know where you keep your Buccaneers? Where? Under your Buccan hat. <laughs> Hollywood's on the line right now. Hollywood, yes, hello. Yeah, we're out at uh, J.C. Crockenberry's Bar and Grill today. Yeah. Well, yeah good, nice, good kind of nice little affair. As a matter of fact, beginning at 5 o'clock and up until 7. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, now. All right. They misquoted me That's on the not... break. It's sleepy between 3 and 7. I can't explain that. Oh, that was you, that snore they had. No, huh? yeah. of course not. Yeah. Of course not. Mm. Not right now, anyway. Yeah. Because there's something exciting going on. As I mentioned, we got a happy hour going at J.T. Crockenberry's Bar and Grill, Uni Deposit Road in Harrisburg. Grease is the word today. Grease is going to be in town for two stage performances, Friday and Saturday night at Star Pavilion, adjacent to Hershey Park Stadium. And we've got a ticket deal for you to save 50% off the box office price. Buy one, get one free. Grease tickets between 5 and 7 tonight only at J.T. Crockenberry's. Cash and checks accepted. We can't take credit cards for this deal. But if you're making plans to go to the Star Pavilion this weekend to see Grease on stage Friday and Saturday night, here's a chance to save 50% off the ticket price. Buy one, get one free from 5 to 7 at Crockenberry. The deck is open. Man, what a beautiful afternoon it's turned out to be. The U.S. Open is on the big screen. So bring your pals out to Crockenberry's after work tonight for some happy hour. Uh -huh. And... Buy one, get one free grease tickets and a free money birthday wheel of spinning, too. Hollywood, you're a big Kansas fan, aren't you? Absolutely. Don't you have a question to ask Robbie of some, some kind? Uh, yeah, I wanted to find out what the song lineup's going to be tonight. Um, well, we're doing all old material, and um, um, I don't know. We've got about, I, I can't even remember how many now, about 14 or 15 songs that we do. So I, I can't give away the secrets, but uh, <laughs> no, I um, 
but without, you're going to do all the you're going to do the wall and you're well, going to do yeah, uh, yeah, Death sure. to the wind and carry on wayward side. Yes sir, absolutely. Uh play the wall first. Um the wall is not first. I'm sorry Hollywood is not first. But it's on the list, right? It is on the list and it's there for you and damn it show up. Well, absolutely. <laughs> okay. Hey, I want a backstage pass and want preferential treatment. You got one. Go if I say that I'm stretched, will you get me in for free? Oh. Goodbye Hollywood. Thanks. Yeah. And by the way, I'll be shopping at Giant tonight if you'd like to come over and join me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Really? <laughs> well, you know, that's sort of rude to ask the, the song list. That's kind of yeah, like a surprise. It is. It, um, it's not really because with this darn internet thing happening, everybody knows everything that we're doing. Looks like people know what I had to eat for dinner. Well, that's kind of cool, though. I mean, you have fans who, like, uh, you know, watch every move you make. I well, mean, it, they... see, it's great that they're that avid, except for um, you, they're parts of, th- of life that were so... Uh, totally personal um, can't be anymore. I mean, it's, and so it's a little bit of a uh, unsettling, I mean, when you think about it. The fact that, that we're not as famous as a lot of people makes it a little bit easier on us because people don't, you know, follow us around in, in droves of 10,000. But uh, yeah, yeah. Um, it can be a little bit unnerving to find out, you know, what you what you did yesterday at 3 o'clock and 3.01 in the afternoon. You know, it's like, it's not that important. Get a life, please. <laughs> Get a life. This goes to all of you listeners out there, not just the ones that are fans of Kansas. Get a life, please. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, Robbie, uh, I appreciate you coming in here, and uh, thanks for hanging out. And uh, you, you, you seem like a normal person, and uh, it's always good. And well, thanks. Uh, like I said, I love doing radio, and it's, it's great to be here. What a, what a great show you got going here. I, I envy you guys a lot. And by the way, your, your days in Boston, um, what were those yeah, days? Yeah, here we go. That, <laughs> that old question again. Yeah. <laughs> I loaded him up. I, I gave him the bear for that. Yeah, okay. Oh, well, okay, have fun tonight at Wanda's uh, with the, the rest of the band. It must, uh, and just, you know, just blow the damn roof off the place. We're going to do that okay. because it's a tiny little place we have lots of equipment yeah the roof is like right here yeah, so. it is <laughs> don't jump with your guitar <laughs> i mean your drums are uh, <laughs> violin. i play the violin violin well, but, but it's okay <laughs> she's a, she's a girl it's okay jackie yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she's a girl works <laughs> <laughs> thanks it's a uh, robbie steinhardt from kansas thank you very much uh, thank you you're the man carry on Carry on. He, he said carry on. <laughs> carry on. <laughs> oh, God, that guy there. We'll be right back. You're listening to The Late Afternoon Show with Bruce Bond. Don't be going anywhere. We'll be right back. I want you to get up now. I want all of you to get up out of your chairs. I want you to get up right now and go to the window, open it, and stick your head out and yell... I'm as mad as hell, and I'm not going to take it.